Okay, hello, thank you for joining Come On Ministries. Uh, we're so glad that you're with us today. This is a another recording of fathers of our voices of our fathers. I'm sorry, voices of our fathers. Wonderful project. We are talking to men who are fathers and believers, fathers um, uh, in the natural, some, and fathers in the spirit, but they are all part of the body of Christ. And the person I have next to me, I'm so excited that he's with us, is Josiah Brock. And I'm going to let him, him introduce himself and talk to you all today about the new father and what that, what that looks like. Yeah, um, God bless you. My name is uh, Josiah Brock. I'm assistant pastor here at Grace Christian Fellowship Church, and I'm happy to be with you. If you hear people talking, we just finished service, so um, so uh, bear with us, but I'm, ha I'm happy to be here with you all today. We're glad that you're with us too, Josiah. So the question, the burning question, one of the burning questions that I get sometimes um, through my inboxes at Cairo Ministry, because we have a tendency to talk a lot of, uh, about a lot of different subjects, and uh, we are kind of an out of, outside the box thinking ministry, and so uh, one of the questions that I've been asked on a regular basis is, is there really a difference between men who are fathers in the body of Christ and men who are not? And if there is, why? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and um, a good father is someone that works to provide the needs for their children and is also an example. So you don't have to necessarily be saved in order to be a good father. But if you're not in Christ, there's only so much you can give them. Because if you're going to be a good, a good example for your children as well, it's, it's more than just going to baseball games. It's more than just teaching them right from wrong. It's also teaching them how to walk and how to exist and who Christ is. And so um, you can be a good father, but the goal is to be a godly father, not just to be a good father. Mm -hmm. And that means having the spiritual aspect of who God is to be able to, to give that to your children as well as an inheritance and to live as an example yourself of what a man of God looks like. I like that answer. Uh, and I would agree with you. you. It's one thing to be just a good dad to show up, but it sounds like you're telling us that there's a different requirement to go beyond that mm -hmm. according to the scriptures, according to the laws of God and we have to be we have to be better than that mm -hmm. and we and he's asking fathers if I hear correctly to be that example mm -hmm. of that extension of who he is yes being a new father yourself mm -hmm. congratulations thank you. thank you what does that now look like how has life changed for you well it, it's it's when you're in Christ it's also about a purpose and a ministry that God has given you and so when I became a father, he has expanded my ministry mm -hmm. where I am responsible for ensuring that I teach my son through the power of the Holy Spirit, the things that he needs to work the ministry that God has for him. My son will look to me for examples of what to do and what not to do. So if I'm not praying, if I'm not fasting, if I'm not studying, if I'm not treating his mother well, if I'm not treating myself well, if I'm not treating him well, it will have an effect on how he lives, how he walks, and the ministry that he does. And so the thing that's changed is the ministry that I already had, it just kind of grew. So now it's, it's no longer just about me and the people that God has for me to minister to. Um, now it's also about him. So in a lot of ways, I, I became a pastor in my own home as much as God has made me a pastor over others. And so that's one of the things that's changed for me. I like that answer. Um... Being that you, you're a young man, a younger man, um, how do you see yourself being a spiritual father? Well, uh, I, in, in a lot of ways, will be, am his first pastor. You know, I'm the one that held him when he came out. I'm the one that, that will see him in between Sunday to Sunday. Mm -hmm. you know, that, that will be able to answer questions and to challenge him and to encourage him, um, to love on him. Uh, to be quiet sometimes, to, to, to just listen at times. And so as that, that's that spiritual covering, it's when he reads about who God the Father is, when he studies who he is, his example will be me because I will be the natural representation of who God is in our home and to him. Um, sometimes that's a challenge I think that people have with understanding God the Father because they might have an issue with their own father. 
So they put that correlation, oh, well, my father didn't do this, or my father, I had this bad example with my father. And so they then, it's difficult then to see that God the Father is a loving, caring, present, just, and merciful Father, as a, as a good, godly Father is. And, that, and so us as natural fathers here, uh, that's a huge responsibility because we are representing who God is and the image and likeness of who he is. Um, so it's, it's a great opportunity, great honor, but also it's, it, there's a great a weight to it because if we don't do what we're supposed to do, there are ramifications to it. Okay, I like that answer too. I like all the answers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I have one more question mm -hmm. for you. Well, two more questions. Mm -hmm. What, if you could share, one of the biggest influences you've taken uh, that, no, I'm sorry, let me, let me digress. Can you give chair a moment um, um, of your, an experience with your father? Some things, maybe one particular moment um, of something that your father demonstrated or shared with you coming up to make you the man that you are today. There have been many moments where my father, that, that come to mind in my mind, um, I think about just you know the, the fun times you go do sports and go to games, but also the the difficult times when he was just there um, and was able to be present and to be able to just listen and give wisdom, not judgment but wisdom, but also be able to tell me when I was wrong. But I had the the trust there where I could receive saying someone telling me that I was wrong. Mm -hmm. Also, this is the thing too. Sometimes when we talk about fatherhood. From a, from, from a biblical perspective, from a, a spiritual perspective, it is not divorce of another person in the picture. Without my wife, I could be no father. So my fatherhood to my son does include how I treat his mother. You know, and so if you look at it from a spiritual perspective, these things shouldn't be done outside of, of, of the confines of, the, of the, the covenant that God has created in marriage anyway. But even if it is, how you treat the, the, the mother of those kids does play a role in your fatherhood. It's not separate from that. It does play a role in that. Because without that other person, you could not be a father. Um, and so I just want to make sure I, I put that in there. So not only has you shown me how to be a man, and it continues to. I'm 37 years old, and I'm still learning how to be a, a man and a better man. Um, he, he, he also he also is an example of on how to treat my own wife, how to deal with frustration. Sometimes your wife get on get on your nerves, <laughs> get on your nerves. How do you how do you walk that out? How do you treat them? That also is about fatherhood. And so my son will look to me and will treat other women based on the example that he sees from me, what to do and what not to do. So fatherhood is huge. It's more than just um, I produced a child. And now I'm responding. No, there's a whole lot more to it than that. The the relationships my son will have with women sometimes will, or with other men, will be all based on how he's seen me treat his mother and him. So fatherhood is huge and very very important. It is, and I would agree with that. Now I I believe that um, be, because it's such a shortage of that example, mm -hmm. not just uh, what we would consider in the world, but even in our in the body of Christ, unfortunately. Um, that is why we see what we see today um, in the world. That's why we see the behaviors of our children uh, because either those parents lacked some of the things that you described mm -hmm. um, or, they, or they don't have the, the willingness to do it, mm -hmm. the patience or the understanding. And so we are producing another generation or generations of dysfunction. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I'm so thankful that you took time out today, decided to um, speak your mind, have your voice heard as a father, and give the example of what fatherhood means to you and the way God has given it and shown it to you. I appreciate you uh, for taking this time out with us. Um, this is Kava Ministries. Uh, we thank you, thank you all today for joining us. Again, this is Josiah Brock. He is uh, part of Grace Christian Fellowship which Calvary kind of Ministry is an extension of. Uh, Bishop Daryl Brock is our pastor. Please continue to support Calvary kind of Ministries and support Grace Online uh, as well. We thank you for joining us. Peace and blessings to you.